Today we're going to talk about the data rates, or the download and upload speeds that the James Webb Telescope will be utilizing as it sends images of our universe that peer deeper into the unknown. Right before we get started, I just want to mention that I'll be using bits and not bytes as data transfer rates. As a quick reminder, one byte equals eight bits, and so one megabyte equals eight megabits. Let's first talk about downlink speeds, also called download speeds, which in my case, I'm describing data sent from the telescope to the Earth. The Webb telescope is currently configured to send data, downlink data, at 8 megabits per second, data such as science and telemetry data. It does this by using the 26 gigahertz KA band coming off of a high gain antenna. The onboard high gain antenna has the capability of sending data at a maximum speed of 28 megabits per second. You might wonder why the Webb telescope is configured to connect at 8 megabits per second when in fact it could theoretically send up to 28 megabits per second. The reason is because the theoretical speed just describes the bandwidth. In other words, the maximum capability of the high gain antenna on the Webb telescope. This is the maximum number that can occur if everything goes completely right when sending data from point A to point B. And that is not always the case because there are numerous factors such as weather around the ground stations, network traffic, and more that can reduce data rates. And therefore, we are left with the throughput, or the practical speeds of 8 megabits per second. However, as ground stations in the deep space network improve, that throughput number can move up closer to 28 megabits per second. Next is the uplink speeds, also called upload speeds. This describes data sent from the Earth to the Webb telescope. Data such as command and ranging info. The Webb telescope uses a medium gain antenna operating on the 2 to 4 gigahertz band, also called S band, to receive uplink data at speeds of 0.04 megabit per second or 40 kilobits per second. Now, to put the downlink speeds of the Webb telescope into perspective, let's use the Hubble telescope as an example. The Hubble telescope is able to send data at a maximum speed of 1 megabit per second, which is 8 times less than the throughput of the Webb Telescope. Even then, the Hubble Telescope can send up to 144 gigabits of data every week, whereas the Webb Telescope will soon be able to send almost 270 gigabits of data and do so every single day. Just imagine how many more pictures we'll be able to see. What is even more incredible is the fact that the Webb Telescope will be able to transmit data at those higher downlink speeds from a distance of 1.5 million kilometers, which is significantly further than the Hubble Telescope that sits in a low Earth orbit at a distance of only 550 kilometers. And after doing the math, the Webb Telescope will be communicating with the Earth from a distance that is 2,700 times further than the Hubble telescope. And let's never forget about the space probe Voyager 1, which is currently, at the time of this video, 23.3 billion kilometers, and that's a billion with a B, from Earth. Voyager 1, the farthest traveled man-made object, can still send data back to us at a max downlink speed of 0.0028 megabit per second or 2.8 kilobits per second, but only for three minutes every week. Real-time data is sent at a much slower 0.00016 megabit per second or 0.16 kilobit per second. And that wraps up our discussion on data transfer rates of the Webb Telescope and how it compares to the Hubble Telescope. 